So, uh, Onesiphorus and I have made quite a big, uh, quite a bit of progress here. Um, I had a really busy week last week with church stuff and pastor stuff. And so I did very little, which to give him a little bit of a break wasn't a big deal. But uh, our intimacy and our closeness has been, uh, has grown quite a bit here in a week. And um, getting where we're kind of getting full hand touches, um, even more so that I'm able to touch him. And him not just touch me and so um to actually have a flat hand out rather than uh, just the back of my hand something not nearly as aggressive as this so for those of you who think well that's not that big of a deal it is it's a big deal that you can go from just uh initiating and having him touch you to actually an open hand and then I also want you to notice the approach is not slinking in anymore. It's more of an aggressive approach and it's a, um, a body straight on rather, rather than a kind of slinking in side by side with a, a quiet hand. Um, I'm trying to get where I can move both hands. And kind of the important thing now is as I walk in kind of normal as if I'm going to catch a, an average horse and I touch him and I kind of just walk away and I initiate the touch, which has been like, just the past couple days, um, I instantly will walk away and give him relief. I'm not doing a um, positive reinforcement, as they would call it. I'm doing a negative reinforcement where I touch. Um, and if he kind of moves away from me, you see I'm going to keep pressure here until he allows me to kind of do the initiating without an awful lot of movement. I keep up the pressure, keep up the pressure. There it is. And I relief it. That's the negative, the negative, the pressure, pressure, pressure. And then I relief a uh, positive reinforcement, like giving them a treat or something like that. And I'm really refraining from trying to do that. Um, because I, I know where he'll be going at the end. Um, and I don't want him ever looking people down for treats, little kids down for treats or anything like that. So um, I'm using the negative reinforcement where I keep pressure until I receive what I'm looking for. And then I walk away, and relieve that pressure. And there's times like even now where he's going to kind of come seek me out for it. Um, I'm not going to move. I'm going to let him um, come and seek me out, which is huge. That's also the really big part um, is that even when he comes to me, you're thinking, oh, you're walking away from him. No, I'm, I'm allowing him to come to me, receive a touch and a smell. Um, and then to relieve the pressure. Um, the idea eventually being that he kind of continues to kind of seek me out. And, uh, you know, Scripture says the same thing. He says, seek, the, seek God with all of your heart, mind, and soul. And if you seek him, he will be found by you. And I'm not ignoring him. I'm just relieving the pressure. And so the more he seeks me, the more relief he gets, the more peace he gets, the more the less pressure he receives because he knows more and more that I'm a safe place. So um, I come up forward facing with an open hand, touch his nose. Uh, the funny thing about him is I'm accepting one of these days I'm going to absolutely get bit. Um, Remember the horse world, that's that's kind of how they do, right? They, they screw around and bite each other, and they groom each other and bite each other, grooming each other. And so I'm, I'm hanging on for that, knowing that one day there will be a big yahoo, and I'm going to try not to <laughs> try not to jump and scream. But again, I'm going to walk up. I'm going to create the, create the pressure and close in the space, do some good touching. I don't want him to move, even, even with a spook like that, I want to come right back in and let him know that wasn't me. And how often, though, we blame God. Like, he, I, he, I walk in there and he blames me for well, who knows what that was, right? He blames me for the chaos or, the, or the, the jump or the scare that he had. And so often in life, I think that we, we tend to blame God for something that might go on in our life that we see as a big deal. And, and in the closeness of, uh, or the intimacy with, with God, we just kind of shake our fist at him and kind of blame him for stuff that happens in our life. When in all reality, I don't know what spooked him. It wasn't, it wasn't anything I have done any different. And so I come in still with a closeness, but a lot of times at that time we were rejectful for it. And we're like, no, you let it happen. You did something. You waved your hand, you spooked and you scared me when actually we're just, 
we're just responding out of our, our woundedness, our woundedness of life experience, our woundedness of the church, our woundedness of other people, or our woundedness of we thought God should have been A, B, C, and D, and uh, we forget that there's an enemy. So, but again, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to come in for an approach as if I was just going to touch him and, and catch him. And I'm, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing the limits. Um, I, need, I need him to know that I'll take care of him. I'll take care of his heart. I'm not here to steal his strength. But I'm actually going to create him where he's, or get him where he's actually going to be stronger um, and more capable than he is now. Um, but I have to push him beyond what he's comfortable or he's never going to learn, right? We have to, we have to, we have to push him outside of that comfort zone. We have to keep closing in on that wolf range so that he starts to learn that, uh, we, we're going to seek more. We're going to ask for more. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to grow him and mature him as life goes on. So I know it's been a while since I posted, but, um, I really wanted to, to take some ground here and just focus on Onesiphorus and I, and, um, not just to have something to show, but, um, you know, to be able to work on these things. Um, I'm not really getting much body touch yet, um, but we're really taking ground here where um, I'm creating an open hand where he's starting, not all the time, but he's starting to seek me more and more like he is right now even. I'll take a, as he, with pressure, takes a few steps back, but with relief of pressure, he comes to, I'll take it all day long. So, um but hey, guys, stay uh, stay uh, updated on what we're doing. Subscribe, like, and share. As Honest Ephraimus and I are both kind of learning as we go here, uh, and he's he's finally starting to kind of seek out a little more uh, intimate touches here. So it's kind of fun. Uh, we're taking a lot of ground. I know it's been it'll be a month on Wednesday. And um, I still am bound determined to just take care of his heart, not to rush anything. Uh, since the Lord talked to, to talk to me a couple weeks ago about that, saying, hey, I want him in that state. So pray for us that we continue to gain ground. And uh, I'm hoping here within another week or so that I can be touching him even better and maybe even possibly getting a halter on him. So um Stay tuned for what we're going to do. So um, don't forget to leave a comment if you got questions, comments, or even, hey, I have a suggestion. Hey, I'm, I'm game for anything. At this point, I've been humbled enough to say um, I, I don't know uh, nearly enough. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to share this too and uh, like it, share it, and subscribe. And uh, keep, uh, keep up on the know with how Honest Ifers and I are making out. So blessings upon you. And uh, until we share next time.